Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma bada habita fillah It's very important that when we are oppressed or when someone speaks ill of us that we do not return the evil with a greater evil. And that comes from the hikmah and wisdom of al-amr bimaruf and nahi al-munkar. And it comes from the wisdom and the fiqh of knowing when there's maslaha and mafsada, that there is benefits and harms in an issue, and to look at the greater of the two evils. All of these principles come into play as a part of fiqh fi deen, as a part of understanding the religion. And all of those principles in the religion, they come from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from the hikmah, wisdom, and excellent manners that were illustrated by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we only reflect is this important hadith and in fact principle on how to respond when someone has oppressed you? And how often do we find, especially in this day and age, people speaking and spewing speech out similar to the way we spill water out of a cup? Or even worse than that, akramakum Allah, is in the way that someone vomits and removes the vile ailments that are inside their stomach, possibly bacteria, possibly from a virus, removing those, that material which is in your stomach. And it comes forth, leaving your body as a result of sickness and spreading. And I'm sorry for being so vivid, but when you really take a look at when someone speaks vile speech and attacks you unjustly, when people backbite and slander you and attack your character, and especially they do it for entertainment and they don't have the right to do so. They may have no knowledge. But for example, when a person curses you and speaks ill about you based on hearsay, based on qil wa qal, you know, and what, what the people say and tales that are being spread and slanders and so forth, and they become excessive and they even curse you behind of what they heard. And then that speech and that evil begins to spread. And it spreads either throughout a community or it spreads around the world with the way we have social media. Then this is the similitude that I was making. That it, it's a type of spewing forth. And a spewing forth of something which is sick. And sometimes, sometimes is the result of sickness within your body. As the Prophet ﷺ said, fasidat, fasidat, jizida kullu. That when it is sick, and he was talking about the heart, he said, Ala wa hiya qalb. And he was talking about the heart, وسلم, that when it is sick, that the whole body becomes sick. Or that, that when, when, when it's sick, the whole body is sick. So if you have a sick heart and all you can do is backbite and spread evil, <clears throat> then the rest of you, your iman, your, your body, has a type of sickness, a spiritual sickness, if not a physical sickness. And how should we respond when someone does this? Listen to this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu qal, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المستبان ما قال فعلى البادئ 
ما لم يعتاد المظلوم أخرجه مسلم Narrated Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said When two men revile one another what they say is held against the one who began it as long as the one who is wronged does not transgress the limits in responding reported by Muslim In this hadith we see this hadith clarifies two things. The first is that the act of avenging oneself on someone who has committed an iniquity is fair and permissible. It's permissible for you to respond to someone. Secondly, the whole sin shall be incurred by the one who starts the quarrel and perpetuates it as long as the other party does not exceed limits by committing an aggression. Despite all of this, it is better to grant one's forgiveness to such evildoers. So it shows us that when someone attacks our honor, we do have a right to respond. We have a right to refute their battle and their falsehood. However, if it's going to involve transgression, then for sure it's better to not do so, or at least keep what your, your response uh, within the limits. Not transgressing, not going into... If they attack your character, you don't have to attack their character. If they uh, attacked your honor, you don't have to attack their honor. But rather, especially when this comes to refuting someone, refuting their falsehood, then keep it ilmi, a rad almiya, a knowledge-based refutation. And so it's very important that we learn to train our speech and our tongue and that we are not people who transgress. And this is the minhaj of the Salaf. This is the methodology of the Salaf al -Sali. And this is the characteristics of the Mu'mineen. And what's the delil for what I'm saying? The Prophet ﷺ said, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ أَثْقُلُ فِي مِزَانِ الْمُؤْمِنِ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مِنْ حُسْنُ خُلْقِ there isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of the believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech, you know, transgressing the bounds with that speech. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to be of Ahla Iman and the people of justice and the people of Khair and Sunnah and protect us from Kufr, Shirk, wa Nifaq and Zandaka. والشر وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد